Well, what I'm getting to is this. You say that the you said earlier that the powers of the Senate are equal with the House of Commons. Yeah. But we don't think of the Senate that way. We don't even think of the Senate usually as even part of Parliament, but to the degree it is, it's not actually supposed to do anything. Like that's sort of the attitude now, I think, that, well, who elected these people? Why would they be allowed to do anything, really? They're just there as a, either as an ornament or the most you ever hear about them is sober second thought, that they're going to look at House of Commons legislation and sort of grease it up a little bit so it slips through easier. You know, That well, seems to be the attitude. Is that what it's supposed to be? That's not what it's supposed to be, that's for sure. Uh, the Senate was supposed to represent the provinces in the legislative process of our federal government. Okay. Um, and so, you know, Section 18 says both the Senate and the House of Commons are equal, they have the same powers and privileges, and both institutions are representative, and uh, the reason is so that the provinces conciliate those local interests in the Government of Canada. Uh, what happened, uh, it uh, goes way back in history, but bottom line is that the Prime Minister of Canada managed to overcome the constraints to his power. Which yeah. Prime Minister did this? Well, it was, it was uh, the original Prime Minister. It was uh, John A. Macdonald with uh, Lord Monk, the representative of the British uh, government, who came to an agreement to the effect that the Senate would not be represented in its inner circle of power, which was the Executive Council. Uh, and they came. Now, by that, you really mean the Cabinet or not? Like the Executive Council and the Cabinet, or well, we don't want to get too tied up in this. I realize that to get to anything intelligent, you have to get to this level, but let's stay with more general questions for the moment. Um, you're saying that it was designed to represent the pro provincial interests in Parliament and that those provincial interests have always been there. That those provincial interests are, you know, were there at the beginning, they're still there, but are you saying that those provincial interests are not represented or, or somehow spoken for in the Senate? Yeah, Canada? absolutely. Uh, <clears throat> you know, Section 22 of our Constitution says that the Senators shall represent the provinces in the Senate. Uh, and they don't do this because the provinces have no say in who shall represent them in the Senate. Well, what was it supposed to be? Like, how did, you're saying it wasn't, it's not the way it was designed. How was it designed? Like, how, who was supposed to appoint the Senators? Then? Well, the Governor General was supposed to appoint the Senators, but he was supposed to appoint the Senators on the advice of the provinces uh, in his council. Uh, the provinces are represented in the Senate, and the, one of the main privileges of the Senate and House of Commons is that there be a leader of each house in the council of the Governor General so, they, so that the Senate and the House of Commons can advise him of the wishes and interests of the people. Now, in the case of the Senate, uh, the Governor General is supposed to appoint uh, the Senators upon the advice of his council and the provinces are supposed to be in his council to advise him uh, who, uh, would, who the provinces want to represent them in the Senate. So the idea then was that you would, that the provinces, the executive councils of the provinces, was that the cabinets or that was the, the cabinets of each small province, each colony? Is, is that who that was or no? The executive council? Uh, yeah. The, in the province. I'm sorry, we're, get, we're getting, we're getting way off. Well, part of the problem is that the language of today is not the language of then. I mean, the institutions have evolved. But no, no, really, no. okay, let's keep it simple. You're saying that the provinces, the people who ran the provinces were supposed to tell the Governor General of Canada who should be in the Senate to represent their province. Absolutely. That's basically what That's was being said. That's bottom line how it works. So there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a line of command, there's a line of authority to do this, which is... Uh, which is not exactly specified in the Constitution, but it's a basic Constitution. Uh, it's sort of the British context of that time. Yeah. yeah, the constitutional context of that day. When you read those words, that's really what they were saying, even though today they might sound a little bit un un inexplicable. Well, you know, over a hundred and so many odd years, uh, uh, we were taught to forget all these, uh, this institution, how it functioned to limit the government. So, you know, that's why we don't have this knowledge today. It was obscured, you know. Well, well who, uh, Vincent, who told, who, who, who made up the idea that the, that the entire function of the Upper House of Parliament, the Senate, was, for, was sober second thought? You're talking about quite a different function when you say representing local or provincial interests in Parliament. 
All we've ever heard, as long as I've been alive, and that's longer than probably I should even admit, but all I've ever heard and all anybody's ever heard is that this is for sober second thought so that all these sort of monkeys in the, in the House of Commons who are always acting up and doing silly things, you know, you've got some wise elder statesmen up there who were all appointed by the Prime Minister because they ran for his party. Um, they're there to sort of dampen it down and improve the legislation and tweak it a little bit. Not the case. Like, where did, where did that idea come from? Well, that's all they're there to do. It came from John A. Macdonald. He invented that. Well, he didn't really invent it because, uh, uh, you know, what he was saying was that uh, the powers and privileges of the Senate uh, originate from the House of Lords, huh. which is completely contrary to the Constitution. It's quite right. clearly contrary. But he managed, you know, he used the, all the financial resources he had at his disposal to uh, convince the people over and over that uh, the Senate had no effective representative role in the House, in the Parliament. I mean, it's because the House of Lords, even in the middle of the 19th century when he was around, the House of Lords had really lost its role in Britain, hadn't it? Like, it well, had very little left to do. Yeah, well, the House of Lords, when originally, I mean, it was, well, there's no such thing as representation as we know it today at the time. At the time, it was based on the feudal system of law where, uh, you know, the lords, the serfs, and the, and the king owed duties to each other. But in fact, you know, the lords were, were in parliament with the king to, uh, you know, uh, protect the interests of their, their territory, you might Their say. area. Their area. So it's, uh, it was representative, but in a feudal sense. Right. And as time went by, what happens was, you know, the, 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 the people, uh, through common law, gained uh, the capacity and the recognition that they had the capacity to govern, govern themselves and their possessions as they wished. And so uh, they became, you know, sovereign in the right to govern themselves. And the king had to call them uh, in a second house called the House of Commons to obtain their consent to, for, to tax themselves to protecting England against uh, invasions. Right. So this is the origin. They were to represent the poor, bloody taxpayer kind of. Thing. Well, so yeah, large, to represent, the, no, to represent those people who had become free of those duties. Yeah, right. Uh -huh. and, oh, good point. Yeah. You know, they, they, they weren't became, part of the feudal system. Yeah, they anymore. were called freeholders. They became free of those duties, yeah. free unto themselves, and they owed no duties to the king or to anybody else. Right. But at one point, uh, they had to protect England right. uh, against invasion and. Uh, so the king, you know, invited them in the House of Commons to get their consent to tax, uh, to, to, to pay for these armies. Way too and, much. And over time... We uh, keep allowing way too much history here. <laughs> Canadians don't like history, okay. Vincent, don't you notice? Know